Welcome to Montana's TV. This is a Montana TV special. My name's Montana. There's been a lot of talk about firearms here recently, and it just happens to be, if I know anything about firearms at all, it would be single action as much as anything. Single action. It's been in the news quite a bit here recently, and there's a lot of people that talk about it that don't know a whole lot. That's kind of like when they talk about the AR-15 military style. They're not fully automatic. They're semi-automatic. The 223 shell was introduced back, I believe, in the early 50s. Had a wooden stock on it shoots the same bullet as the AR-15. It was called a ranch. A lot of ranchers used them to get rid of prairie dogs and such. It is a very efficient shell. In fact, that's what one looks like right there. I want to make sure that you see that. That's the bullet. This is the casing. When I was a kid, I thought that powder probably filled those up. It don't. There's just a little bit of powder in there. And the expansion of that powder, when it ignites in that shell, causes the combustion, shoots out the bullet, and there you go. One of the things that make a 223 a little more dangerous is because of the end over end. Now in the cowboy days, 44, 44, 40, 45, I think somewhere around 900 feet per second, whereas a 223 is around 2,000, 2,200 feet per second. There's part of your difference. However, the 45 is a slower bullet, but because of the weight and the grain, it'll knock you down. It will knock you down. When I was a kid, probably because of playing Army and Cowboys, because that's, that's about all that was on when I was growing up, was Westerns. Uh, this weekend, I've been doing a little binging on an old show called Stony Burke about the rodeo. I used to run around with some rodeo riders. Put your finger in the trigger hole. You'll see them a lot on Westerns doing that on their rifles. They always got their finger in there on their pistol. Wrong. And now it's more politically correct. But it is uh, more of a safety to have your finger on the outside of that gun. In fact... Like this. Never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to pull it. And nine times out of ten, it's because you want to kill something. I'm not a killer. I don't believe in killing. I do believe in self-defense. Let's see, we're going to have to put some of these other things in here. I spent 20 years, over a 20-year period, of doing reenactments as a U.S. Marshal. Uh, I'm also a member of SAS. Marshal Montana is my alias name. A lot of guys were getting a little bit crazy. You see, they talk about prop guns. Uh, someone on Fox, I think she made a boo-boo and called her a pop gun, but listen, we're using real firearms. This is the problem when you're on a set because you're using a real firearm that can kill someone. I never understood why they did not make uh, some sort of a special, there are blank, blank guns, but that look just like this, but maybe the cylinder walls are a little bit different size. Um, 
to accept only a blank where you know it's almost impossible to put a real live round in there why they haven't done that uh, i think there was a huge market for it back in the 50s when westerns were so popular in 60s it would have been lucrative i think it would still be a money-making thing to have had separate guns for that but in most cases they use a real firearm in the old days we have now on this one you won't really be able to see it it's called a safety block the safety block means that the hammer has to be pulled all the way back pull the trigger before it fire it's a safety feature however when you are in a competition and i've done that in sas what you do is on um, Almost all guns, except for Rugers, you pull it half cocked. Then you can turn the cylinder. You put one in. This is a blank. No bullet. I've got pictures of shooting blanks where you can burn somebody's face off with it if you're close enough. Still a very dangerous. You don't see it in the daylight. So we had taken some pictures uh, at dusk just so you can see how much fire really does come out. I learned that years ago, hunting in the dark when we coon hunted. My grandfather was an avid hunter. One in, skip one, four more. He believed in using the dog. Some people will shine, it's called shining, and you can stick a flashlight or a spotlight and see a coon from two miles off. You can see his eyes. It's not giving him much of a sporting chance. So with the dog, the dog trails, changes his bark when he's straying. Okay. One in, skip one, four more. Close the gate, cock it all the way back and let it down carefully and you can check it this way to make sure that that top chamber the one that's in line has nothing in it in the old days if you didn't have a tie down on your holster which most people did but if you didn't have it and that fell down and that hammer hit if it was not a safety block it would hit that shell and people have died in fact, the man carrying the gun died by his own gun riding a horse and, you know, falls off, hits the hammer, the hammer hits the primer, the primer hits um, the combustion and starts that reaction where the bullet comes out. There's going to be a lot of guys that will be very critical of what I'm telling you here because they know more about this than I do, and some people do. Some guys are just arrogant. And I, I'm not very good with arrogance. Pointing the gun at the camera. If there's no one behind the camera, you can't get away with it. But this day and age, there's no reason to take... You just take a picture from the side. He's looking like he's shooting at that person. You know, your next scene is that person but you never really was anywhere close to aiming that gun at that person. These that I just put in here are full load blanks. Buffalo blanks is one of my favorites. Half cock with the gate open, everything comes right back out. Five. In competition, you have to leave that one You do five and five. You carry two pistols. Mounted shooters shoot balloons. They go down and shoot five. They turn around and come back and shoot another five with their other gun. If you're right-handed, you want both guns right-handed. And that's the way I've got them right here. I'll take this off. 
This was made by the Amish. This holster here. In fact, so was this holster. Um, I did all the extra cutting down. If you if you watch like the Virginian and stuff like that, I believe his name was Arlo. Yeah, it was one of the first ones. It was called a walk and draw. You walked and fire, and then you would you would.